now we will have a question answering session where we ca you can ask any questions regarding the tools that were demoed in the workshop maratwada institute we are facing a lot of difficulty in not installation uh, is there any alternate way of not installation i believe it's not is already installed in the virtual machine for installing it on your own systems you can follow the online manual it in very easy steps explain how to install snot and barnyard if you want we can post the link to that man to that manual on moodle 1173 oh. this is from kyagrachar engineering college go ahead our doubt is before attending this workshop we have downloaded this snot in windows so how to view the rules in the windows version in windows machine uh, how do, how did you install snot it was available in the web okay so you downloaded the installer ah yes when you go to the uh, installation directory of snot there should be a the folder called rules in that folder you can see a file local.rules if not you can create a file and write the snot rules there thank you so my question is what are the different rules those can be written using snot other than the tcp and the udp etc apart from tcp and udp the only three protocols that you can give is tcp udp and icmp and uh, there are many rules options available you can see the snot manual and you have to use your own creativity in creating new rules also you can download you can subscribe for snot rules on that website and you can download the rules from there dronacharya college can you explain the various alert modes of snot for example pull console etc and what are the difference between them the modes that are available are alert for generating alert log for logging the packet and pass for ignoring the packet apart from these three there are, there is already also an option of dropping the packet but that option is available only on the inline mode of snot for inline mode you have to use a different kind of installation in this installation you can only uh, make alert or log the packet 1145 yeah we are having this not over here as a demo so what are the other features provided by snot port scanning detecting synchronous flood likewise what are the additional features it can provide as i have already told you snot is used to capture packets and analyze them and then generate alerts if anything suspicious is found so the this is the most basic functionality of snot you can change it any way you like using the snot rules you can write any creative rule and uh, see the results the, uh, after uh, restarting snot the only thing that you can uh, that you can do is change snot rules so that it suits your uh, specification can we make use of this uh, tool for all kinds of uh, web servers snot is not related to the web servers in in any way snot only captures the packets and analyzes them so it can capture any kind of packet which can be which is targeted for any web server it is not related to the web servers it can capture any packet you have demonstrated using linux operating system so how to uh, make use of the tool in windows you can make use of in all other operating systems also the same tool in the demo we have installed snot in ubuntu additionally you can install it on windows also there is no problem in installing in windows thank you I have two questions on Snort. Uh, first, uh, is it possible to define multiple rules on uh, local dot rules while, say, for example, one on TCP and another one on UDP? Yes, yes. You you can deploy so, any number of rules in the local dot t local dot rules file. Okay. So, and the second one is, uh, is it possible to have a list of attacking vectors predefined in a place and use it? Say, for example, if I am running a web application service in a port. and uh, if i am trying to do an sql injection is it possible for me to uh, define sql injection in a place and once if the attacking vector reaches a port i can uh, raise an alert is it possible actually when you open the uh, directory snort rules it will have different files for different attacking vectors in each file there are rules for that attacking vector only so if you if you want to create rules for different attacking vectors differently you can make a separate file you have to remember that whenever you have you make a new rules file you have to enter that the name of that rules file in snort.conf when you open snort.conf file you can see that there are various rule files listed you have to enlist your rule file also and then restart snort 
थैंक यू श्री नारायण गुड आफ्टरनून सर सर व्हाट इज ब्लैक लिस्ट एंड व्हाइट लिस्ट रूल इंडिकेट्स इन स्नॉट ब्लैक लिस्ट एंड व्हाइट लिस्ट आर नॉट रूल्स रूल्स आर ओनली रूल्स आर ओनली दैट आर डिफाइंड इन स्नॉट स्लैश रूल्स डायरेक्टरी सर व्हाट आर द पैकेजेस वी हैव टू इंस्टॉल टू एग्जीक्यूट स्नॉट इन काली लिनक्स आई बिलीव काली लिनक्स इज अ वर्जन ऑफ ओबंटू Uh, of a version of Linux, so uh, there won't be any problem if you follow the same steps that are used to install it on Ubuntu. You can follow the manual for installation, which will be uploaded on Moodle soon, and it will work on also on Kali Linux. Hello, Nehru. In OS X yesterday, we were not able to connect to the remote machine or to the nearby machine at least, and analyze using SSL command whether the problem would be in the uh, network settings or. Uh, anything other than that most probably the problem would be from your network setting the way you installed virtual box so during installation you have to enable virtual box networking option so in the instruction it was given to disable it so that is why most of the problem comes uh, so you just need to reinstall virtual box with default settings and then you can be able to ssh from the host machine to the virtual machine so the experiment is uh, designed in such a way that it will ping from any other machine if you give a bridge connection option i think that answered your question and if you want more specific doubt or specific details you can use our forum and uh, you can print some screenshot so that we can get more idea about the error techno india salt lake uh, i have a question out here yeah, when we are doing penetration testing we use nessus and metasploit to do it so whenever we are doing it so can you just explain it how we can use uh, nessus and metasploit in doing penetration testing so we demoed actually the same thing i mean to do any penetration testing you will first have to scan the open ports that you can do using nanmap and nessus both once you scan an open port based on the database of nessus it will have many uh, vulnerabilities present in that system so for example windows when we have port 445 open it will give the vulnerability ms08067 which we have demoed today based on that exploit you can actually uh, uh, do use the meta exploit to exploit that so which is already told to you uh, just a follow up question on that so after we get the exploit so what is the next step can we usually go for uh, using uh, when we are doing the port scan can we use snort there yeah it's not is not for preventing any sort of thing it is just to detect so if uh, you figure out that there is a vulnerability in that you just use is not based on that rules and then you can uh, figure out whether uh, a port scan or something some exploitation is being done on that thank you. yes go ahead what are the different file formats which is not log support can for uh, say any to export analysis what do you mean by file format if i need to do some analysis on the log I need the log in certain formats. Right? So, say XML format is the one which is generally used for many things. So, does not support that. No, it's not doesn't produce logs in XML format. It's not it's not produces logs in dot log format or dot u two dot some <coughs> numbers. And that log can be read using Barnyard. That's why Barnyard is installed. You don't have to worry about how the how those rules are saved in your system. You only have to. run barnyard it will read the rules for you and display on the interface okay so suppose say if i'm going to get an alert on an intrusion uh, so how will that data be stored that data is stored in snort format it is snort.u2.some number uh, so suppose if i want to do an analysis on the historical uh, data so are, are there any tools to uh, do the analysis say i want to do a correlation with these points across several months I will say that I haven't tried that, but one thing that I can suggest is uh, once not logs are stored, Barnyard can read them and update on a database. You can write a query on that database and extract all the alerts that have been generated uh, since the beginning. And on you can choose any format, text format also, and you can uh, write a program to access that file. That will be easier than reading not logs. Okay, Spatel. Yeah, my question is for Nmap. How can we figure out which version of OS is running using Nmap? So in Nmap, there is an option of OS fingerprinting. In the demo, I showed a, a scan option which is called aggressive scan, which performs all kinds of tests on the target host. It also does an OS fingerprinting. 
but nmap has a database of os fingerprints the, the well known uh, operating systems the fingerprints are there in the database already but if uh, if we find some new fingerprint and we and uh, and it is not there the nmap does not uh, predict what uh, operating system is there then we can contribute that fingerprint to the nmap database so this way uh, nmap uh, the database of nmap keeps on growing every day so os fingerprinting is an option in nmap which you can use yeah gcdm memorial college so my question is how to run ssh command in osec tool as i said mostly this problem is because of the installation of uh, the way virtual box is installed uh, you need to reinstall the virtual box with its default settings and then uh, you can be able to okay. ssh uh, you saw the video osac video in that video this ssh is completely explained so you stick to the video that will guide you better and if you have any more specific question like uh, any configuration or something which need to be done for ssh then you can uh, post that question in uh, moodle we will uh, try to answer it as soon as possible so we have to reinstall the virtual box again and yeah have to run because this during uh, in the video i have shown that you have to select the bridge network so if you disabled that network uh, virtual box networking during the installation then you won't be able to see anything which is listed in the dropbox menu so you need to reinstall to make it enabled that will fix the problem i believe okay sir thank you yeah bh gardi college uh, my question is uh, is compulsory to in the meta squad uh, as a victim have a xp os or any other os can be we perform also meta squad yeah there are lot of exploits no, on meta exploit there are there no. is a list of exploit you can see so uh, mostly they are on windows but you can find many exploits on ubuntu as well on linux system specifically so and and also you can update your meta exploit and it will have more and more uh, exploits on linux systems second question is uh, uh, how can get a gui gui of the victim uh, gui of victim see in a, in my demo i have uh, two virtual box so actually i am showing the operating system victim operating system in the real scenario you may not get the gui but you can get a command prompt of that system on which you are attacking there is you say that na yeah, there is in two view of in vmware there is victim and attacker okay yeah in the uh, attacker pc how can we get gui of the particular victim pc no in see actually in my demonstration i have two virtual boxes so i have actually two operating systems residing on my one virtual box so that's why i was able to open two operating systems so i was actually showing you the windows operating system as a complete different system so in real scenario windows will be a different operating system and you need to attack that in the real scenario you may not get the gui of that system okay thank you sir sri shankaracharya college sir my question is regarding intrusion detection system first one is that uh, the placement of ids in network and second is that when it gets a false negative what is the type of what is the level of risk in the network in the host system you can see in this diagram i have i have already explained the placement of ids the topmost part is internet which which connects to a router of our network and which leads to a switch in that switch there is a mirrored port on that port ids is connected it is connected to a mirrored port so that the ids receives a copy of every packet that is passing through the network and then the internal network part that consists of a firewall followed by the rest hosts that are present in the network this is the simplest kind of installation that we can have yeah 1173 my question is regarding a meta exploit tool so we said our host and l host uh, we gave the command uh, exploit but it uh, says that failed so what's the reason behind maybe the situation is that uh, your uh, your firewall in windows xp might be on so you try to close the firewall uh, switch off the firewall i mean we are doing penetration testing so this is justifiable that we are closing the firewall so you should try that and then attempt okay is there any case study for a meta exploit can you tell any problem where we can apply these uh, tools there are a lot of uh, exploits on windows i mean you can easily uh, see them on online so uh, i mean maybe if you want we can just provide you the link on moodle 
and you can look at it and then we'll tell you can you just post this query on Moodle so we'll respond to that Sri Ramakrishna Institute uh, so my doubt is uh, can it not be used for personal computers yeah, in case if we are doing a research and uh, I install it's not in my PC uh, is it possible to work with it yes it is absolutely fine in the virtual machine that we are given it is installed on our personal computer only so that that is working fine you can install it on your personal computer also that will totally be fine thank you sir vn college uh, sir uh, my question is whenever we run command with sudo it didn't give result but if we delete the sudo then it gives result why it is so i think uh, this more question more relevant to uh, osac so i have used uh, sudo in osac experiments uh, basically sudo is to give a user a privilege of root so that some system level changes can be made so i think that answers your question if basically it's for doing some changes in the uh, basic software components of ubuntu or linux so normal user won't be able to do any changes but root user can change the configuration so to get the root user privilege we are uh, i mean uh, we are using sudo there will be separate uh, file which is saying who are the sudoers so i think you can explore on internet what is sudo as what is sudo permission that will give you a broader idea so am i did i answer your question yes sir thank you nanamuni college of engineering why dwa can run only in virtual machine actually dwa can be run on any machine it is not uh, there is no requirement of virtual machine uh, you should have web server running on your system where you can host dwa St. Gates College. Can we use Node to protect a network from denial of service with the default settings? By, by using the default rules, yes, it can, it can stop D, DOS and DDoS. But there can be many varieties of DOS and DDoS. Snort rules cover only a few of them. If there is some new kind of attack, new kind of DOS attack or DDoS attack, then you will have to write a new rule to cater to that attack. Dr. Malingam College. Sir, is there any GUI based SNART tool is there? For Ubuntu, uh, no, there is no GUI. You can, there is only one command. You, you can simply run it from there. For, uh, uh, for Windows also, there is no GUI. For Windows also, you have to run it using CMD. However, for, for seeing the results, for seeing the alerts, there is a GUI that we have mentioned in the demo. For running the for running snort tool, you only have to run one command. That's why you don't have any GUI. One more question: How we can able to create the IDS data set using snort? If you want to analyze the data, snort only does it is it captures packets and generates alerts based on rules. Those alerts are logged in snort logs, and they can be read using Barnyard, and they are updated to a database. If you want to analyze that database, then you can simply log into MySQL and export all the data that has been generated by Snort. Then you can use any other process, you can write any other program to analyze that data set. If you want the details how to, how to extract data from the database, uh, you simply have to log into MySQL uh, the, uh, in Snort. The password is MySQL, also, MySQL in the virtual machine that has been given to you. I will upload the steps in Moodle later. Raj Lakshmi Engineering College. I just want to know about the Nmap tool. And we, could we use Nmap tool within the intranet only for Indian paper law? You asked that uh, whether the Nmap tool can be used in intranet only or whether it can be used uh, on the internet also. See, the Nmap tool, by intranet uh, uh, we mean the, the network of a particular institution which uses a private address. It can be used there. It can also be used on the internet, but the only thing is that the internet uh, may contain many uh, security devices uh, which can uh, skew the result of Nmap. You can definitely use Nmap on the internet also, but uh, there are some things like uh, uh, the, the ARP discovery protocol which we uh, demonstrated in Nmap cannot be used on the uh, internet whenever uh, there is a router between us and the target host, we cannot uh, use the ARP discovery protocol. That's it. There is no other change. 
GL Bajaj. My question is regarding OSAC. When I was installing OSAC yesterday in the lab, so uh, there was four options, namely uh, that server, agent, hybrid and local. And at the last that worked for local only. So had I made something or that works for only local only in OSAC? In OSAC, local we have made it so that it will work only in uh, that system, particular system for experimentation. But for the practical usage, it is usually done in a network where a OSAC server will be separately installed in a large server with a high capability and the agents will be separately installed in the other nodes so that uh, the alerts will be sending to the server, so server will do the processing. So simple answer is no, you can also install, it is meant to be installed in network systems. So did I answer your question or? Thank you. Siligori Institute. My question is from NMAP. The, what is aggressive scanning in case of NMAP? The aggressive scanning option in NMAP uh, performs a, a lot of tests on the target machine. First it does a discovery whether the host is up or not. After that, uh, it tries to scan all the ports, wh whichever ports are open. Mostly it scans the well-known ports, the first 1000 ports which are there. After that, it uh, tries to uh, send some malform packets to the target machine and uh, by looking at the response which the machine gives, it tries to guess the uh, version of the software running. Like uh, for example, if uh, there is an F FTP server running and you are sending a malform packet uh, with some bad flags to that particular port and by the seeing the response of that uh, machine you can uh, guess what version of FTP it is running and similarly all, all other ports which are open we can guess the version of the services which are running and we can also similarly guess the version of the operating system which is running and that feature is called OS fingerprinting. My second question is that uh, how we can know the, uh, which ports are currently open, uh, like which uh, well-known or registered port is currently open in my system by using Nmap. Uh, you want to know what, what ports are open on your own system, am I correct? Yeah, yeah. See, you can do this by Nmap only. Uh, you can uh, use Nmap space minus small s capital P this will not do the discovery check but if even if it does uh, there is no problem after that you give the range of ports uh, for it to check you can do a TCP sync check or uh, uh, whatever TCP connect check uh, connect check whichever options which I have uh, shown in the demo and it will give all the list of ports to you another command in Linux is uh, uh, SS uh, small S S space minus A N T. This op this command in Linux will show you what what ports are open and listening on your own machine. So you can uh, find this out without Nmap also. I have an another question. Um, in, no in traditionally uh, the IP uh, format frame format having lots of frames. Can you modify the frame by using uh, some uh, commands? like the TTL or any other fields of IP datagram frame format manually? You want to uh, create custom packets, that's what you are asking, right? So th there is a uh, tool for it, it's called HPing, H-P-I-N-G. Uh, you can use that tool and it creates uh, whatever kinds of packets we want. And there is another tool called uh, uh, Network Packet Generator and you can to this network packet generator you can provide the, exactly the packet which you want to transmit in a file and it takes the input from the file and simply transmit it on the uh, wire central university is it possible to develop some applications uh, that directly communicate with the data that is provided as output by this node uh, no i haven't worked up on any application which directly reads the data the only application we have used is barnyard and as I've already told, if you want to read the data using some program, then you can extract the data from the MySQL database on which Barnyard's up, Barnyard updates it. You can use the database and export the data from there and then run any program on that. If I come across some application that is that can directly read the snort logs, then I will certainly inform you. Thank you. VMS College. Sir, how to try out the new detection algorithm among these tools? 
like in BBM, BBWA or wild shark in there. If I may correct, like uh, you are actually asking for how to try out your own algorithms. Like say if you want to try your own algorithm which you designed and you want to try out using some of these tools. Am I correct? Yes, sir. It depends on the algorithm you are using. Like if you create some algorithm for network intrusion detection, uh, see most of these tools are open source tools. So these tools are mostly available online in GitHub and you, you can go to the websites and you can find the where it, the source files are present. So you can download the source files, you can find out where exactly uh, those things are there, like uh, those functions were written. So you can write a file which adapt to that software, particular software and you can plug it in or you can modify the software. Uh, so that you can try out your own algorithms. So these tools are open source tools. So you are free to work with it and you are free to modify it on your own risk. Uh, if, uh, if you want to uh, add a new plugin into Nessus, the which, uh, which will do perform your uh, new detection algorithm, then you can write it using uh, NASL language which is provided by Nessus. So Nessus community uh, users do write their own plugins and add it to Nessus database so that it can be used through Nessus to perform that particular intended activity. So Nessus is a tool uh, you can use. Shastra University. Uh, how do we protect uh, snot? In, uh, because uh, in the morning session we saw that we can delete the event log from a from the fixed machine. Uh, is there any possibility to uh, disable whether the intruder can disable uh, snot? Or if you, if you identify that the idea is running on a victim machine, and you go ahead and in, uh, disable the snot, or what are the pr procedures do we need to follow to prevent that kind of action? Yes, it is very possible that the attacker can attack snot. It depends on the skill level of the attacker. So I think it is possible to attack snot also. And if you, if you want to know, there can be multiple level of ideas. Like we have installed only one IDS on our system, you can install two or three IDSs also. So if attacker attacks one of them, the next IDS can detect that attack. You can install uh, snot in that way also. PVP. Can we capture managed connections using any tool? So I, I will, I'm not sure about this answer, but uh, let's say uh, you connected your mobile with your system and your system is running Wireshark and you, uh, the managed network is on in your uh, system and you can uh, access from your system, then Wireshark can capture the, all the packages which is sent through or sent to your uh, mobile and it can be done, I believe. I am not sure about this. So you can uh, post a more detailed question on this if you want a detailed answer on the Moodle. Also in Snot, if you are connected to a mobile ad hoc network, that network interface will be visible uh, in your system. So when you run SNOT, there is the last option where we have given it's zero. That is for Ethernet interface. You can replace it with your mobile network's interface also. Then it will capture and monitor the packets of mobile network. Hello, sir. I have one more question for you. Sir, okay, what are the tools we are using that NSS, NMAP, SNOT, or we are we used for connection-oriented networks, no? Can we have all the monitoring tools for any wireless networks or this can be used for the same purpose? As I just explained, SNOT, I can tell about SNOT. SNOT can be used for wireless networks also. Instead of Ethernet interface, you have to mention the wi wireless interface, which is usually WLAN 0 in most, most Ubuntu systems. So you can use that interface to capture the uh, wireless packets. Wireshark also it's possible. Only thing is uh, during uh, selecting the interface, you have to select the wireless network. Ronachari College. My question is, if suppose we are getting some threatening emails from no reply server, so can you suggest me any tool to find out the sender's location? It's sending from no reply email ID. So basically, Google, Yahoo and what are the mail servers, it have a no reply email ID specifically for sending no reply emails. So that is the sender. So apart from that, you want to know more details about the email, where it sent from, where it came, and all those things can be got from a uh, header, email header. And there are online tools which are available. You just search in Google, uh, like uh, analyzing email headers. So you can find the tool. You just need to copy the header and then paste it there. And th that will give you entire details of, uh, I mean, what is the 
when it sent and who sent, what server it used and all those details. So you can get it from email headers. So search for email header analysis on uh, Google. You can get those tools. Rock group. Sir, how you will use this uh, Nmap tool, sir, uh, for uh, ethical hacking? Nmap tool for ethical hacking? See, the tool doesn't mean for like, the tool is for that purpose. Using Nmap, what you does is up to you. Whether you are going to use it for ethical hacking or something else, so it's up to you. Basically, you can use the tool for its purpose. Like, uh, I, I think my colleague, he will give you more detail. In any kind of hacking, uh, there are various phases. The, like, if someone is trying to rob a bank, the first, if he, uh, first for many few days, he will try to observe the schedule when the security guard comes in and out, which door are uh, vulnerable. Uh, and when when do the uh, vehicles uh, come and go and such things so like in uh, when you are trying to attack a network or a remote host here also you have to do some intelligence gathering so nmap helps us in this it's it's used in the reconnaissance phase of the attack and uh, it it is not intended to cause any harm to the remote machine it's just for gathering information which can be used later to uh, cause harm. So, so as in ethical hacking sense, you can use Nmap to scan your own uh, uh, precious machines and to see which ports are open, which ports you want to, to be closed. You can uh, uh, close them off, or you can uh, put a firewall and uh, filter the ports. But Nmap is used for uh, gathering the inter intelligence. That's all. Anna University. In DDW, the Executed some of the SQL injection attack. We executed that tool, uh, that attack for three different categories only low level security, under only medium level security, under only high level security. Low level security allows when a user enters the username as 1R1 equal to 1 and password as 1R1 equal to 1. In that case, it displays the Surname as well as uh, last name in the website. But when we go for uh, middle level R, high level security, it prevents single quotes as well as double quotes if it is entered in the username and uh, password fields. But my question is is there any other methods other than removing the single quotes and double quotes from the username and password for preventing the SQL injection attack? in DVW software, is there any other methods for preventing the SQL injection attack? Actually, you want to ask that, uh, is there any method apart from removing quotes uh, from the string to prevent the SQL injection, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, there are hackers we, uh, who can craft uh, creative attacks in SQL. So therefore, instead of blacklisting, you should whitelist uh, your input. Like you should, uh, while sanitizing in input, you should check that if input is intended to be the digit in digit value or in string, that should be done at the uh, at uh, at the client side while checking the input. So uh, that will be the one solution. And another solution is uh, you should detect. Uh, queries in, in your input, uh, like SQL has syntaxes, select, from, these keywords you can detect and uh, you can code your web page to detect these inputs and uh, block this input while writing into the input field. This can be the one solution. So, St. Xavier's, please ask your question. I have to know if firewall is installed in the network, whether we can work with Nessus tool or we have to configure in the Nessus tool regarding that. I have to know whether if firewall is installed in the network, whether we can work with the net, net, Nessus tool or not, or we have to do any configuration in the Nessus tool for, uh, for, for working with the network which has a firewall. Actually, uh, what the firewall does, firewall uh, skew the packets ca uh, coming in more number from any another, another machine. So, what does Nessus do? Nessus, in uh, trying to ping that machine, sends uh, more than five to six packets to that machine. So, if the firewall is there, then obviously those packets will be silently dropped by the firewall. So it will be good uh, to turn off the firewall and uh, the main purpose of using Nessus is to do penetration testing. 
So that's why we should turn off the firewall and uh, do scanning using Nessus. So and uh, no other configuration need to be done in inside Nessus uh, to keep the firewall. Did that answer your question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you.